So let's rock. My name is uh, Dr. Hervé Damas. I am a physician I'm based in Miami, Florida. Uh, I was trained in general surgery and diagnostic radiology, but now I make cannabis my thing. It's my specialty, so, so to speak. I do pretty much cannabis all day long, um, and I enjoy it much more than I did radiology, which is not fun and exciting. Um, <laughs> quick background on me. Uh, some small things. Uh, I played pro football way back in the 90s, played for the Bills. We got a big game tomorrow. We're going to kick the Dolphins' tails tomorrow. Um, and that's really pretty much how I got into um, cannabis. I wasn't a uh, cannabis user, so to speak, because of the stigma with, you know, marijuana and athletics and, you know, losing scholarships and losing your ability to earn a, a living in professional sports, right? So it wasn't my thing. Years later, I started suffering from some of the injuries that you hear about um, from former athletes. You know, I had a couple of surgeries, headaches, anxiety, mood swings, a bunch of stuff, prescribed a bunch of uh, you know, uh, narcotics and other things, which I couldn't tolerate, thank God. Um, you know, I, I consider myself lucky that I couldn't tolerate those, so I found no relief. And, you know, after being resistant for about, at a point after my last surgery, which was when I was in medical school, um, took me about six months to even like, okay, I'll, I'll smoke some weed and see, right? Because I had been prescribed um, Percocets and, and Oxycodone and Xanax and, you know, I was taking uh, Benadryl to go to sleep and a bunch of stuff. And one day I was just like, what the hell? Like, how is this happening to me? And it's not helping me whatsoever. And I was, you know, with someone at the time who just was just like, you should smoke some weed. That stuff works. And I was like, no, it doesn't. If it did work I would know about it because I'm a big brain and uh, obviously I wasn't that big of a brain right it took me a, a while to even consider it and then when I finally did it worked and so that was my foray into the cannabis space and when it worked I knew that there was something I had to give back uh, and that's that's the God's honest truth that's why I'm here that's why I do a lot of this stuff because I was in a place where I didn't believe any of this stuff whatsoever had any truth any efficacy to it whatsoever right i was part of the uh you know institutional uh medicine system we don't learn that stuff in medical school we don't learn it in residency in any of our training we don't believe it in it and then you know because of that i was not willing to even consider it and it helped me tremendously and so i said to myself well if i was in that situation looking at my point of view and my perspective on things i could only imagine what other people are going through or what other people think and what's going on with them right because it made a tremendous difference in my life so set me off on my little um path and here we are today talking about CBD and its effects on neurotransmitters I really enjoy sharing scientific knowledge with people I think that's one of the, one of the things that um, you know is is a, a black mark on our um, kind of uh, you know developing industry because people perceive that there's a lack of information available but there's tons of information available you just have to look for it and have to find it and be willing to look for it so i i love being able to share that with people and, and let them know hey listen you know there is science behind some of the behind a lot of this stuff and there's reasons why these things happen and you know it's not all hocus pocus and a bunch of you know weirdos in back room somewhere you know so I am happy to share it all with you guys. Any questions you have, feel free to ask me. You can interrupt me during the during the um, talk. I don't like to have an audience like just like, oh, right? I'm very sarcastic, right? So if you're like, is he? If you at any point say to yourself, is he? 
is he serious? I'm not. All right. If you at any point are like, is that dude telling the truth? Then stick with your spidey senses. All right. She's trying to sabotage me at the moment. All right. Right before <laughs> she's doing her best to sabotage me. All right. Look at this. Got a little, a little Bluetooth dongle here. I didn't even know they still made those. Thank you for bringing me back to 2010. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Will this deck be available to us? Would you guys like it? Yeah. Should I give it to them? No. She said no. Nah. She says only she gets a 5% cut. Uh, I'll send it out to them and then they'll be able to send it out to you guys. All right? Look okay. at okay. easy peasy. You guys will be getting the video as well. All right. For 1995. <laughs> for plus shipping and handling. And if you order now. All right. So let's talk about <laughs> two for one. So let's talk about, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about CBD um, and neurotransmitters. All right. Here's a little disclosure. I will discuss cannabidiol, CBD, and its potential use as a nutritional supplement. This information should not be used in lieu of medical advice from a licensed health practitioner. Very important. I'm a licensed health practitioner. I busted my ass to get my degree, right, and and, and go to, go through training. And there are things that you know you should see your doctor about if you have really serious health concerns, right? So, you know, don't try to fix things yourself. Sometimes it's good to get an expert and sometimes it's good to supplement that. Cool? All right, let's rock. All right, what are neurotransmitters? The answers are on the board, all right? But has anybody ever heard of neurotransmitters before? Heard of that word before? We got three hands. All right. And there's probably 10 more of you who have, but don't want to put the effort to raise your hands because you're too cool for that. We got the, the crew in the back. That's always like, you know, you've been doing that stuff in the back since junior high school, <laughs> hanging out, right? That's your spot. So neurotransmitters are these wonderful chemicals that are produced by the body that are like signalers and messengers. They allow a flow of information. That's their, that's their purpose, right? And there are a number of them. They're basically like, if you want to think, they're kind of like traffic signals or crossing guards. They allow things to move. They tell some things to stop. So some neurotransmitters are inhibitory. That means they tell the signals or they tell the message to stop or they tell the messenger hold on hold your horses and others are excitatory that means they allow the message to continue and sometimes they amplify the message right now these things neuro coming from the term nerve right like neurons so we're going to be talking about neurons here right they convert these electrical signals into messages right so nerves our, our entire body runs on electricity right so they it runs on electrical signaling through our nerves through potentials through ionic exchange of voltage right so this is like way back chemistry that you were like i'm never going to use this again i don't know why you're asking these questions in class remember that well here we go right you got positive and negative ions this is how a battery works because there's a flow of atoms from those positive to negative and as a result you get an electro you get polarization and depolarization causes this action potential and it moves the signal down now on your nerve which is called an axon i think we have a little um and she she sabotaged me with this thing because she's got me dependent on it now and it's not working you may have to do it from yeah so she played me <laughs> all right all right so so the important things about neurotransmitters is that they must be produced inside a neuron, right? Found in the neuron's terminal button and released into the synaptic gap upon arrival of an action potential. I had to write that down because I would not have memorized that. So you're not, you guys are not gonna have to memorize that, right? So what it means is that if we look at a typical nerve ending, and you know, there are nerves all throughout your body. We all have, the largest concentration of nerves in your body is where? 
There you go. We have big brain in the front, right? So on top, you have what would be considered a signaling nerve. So the message is coming from on top and it's going to the one on the bottom. So the light blue is a signaling nerve and the green is the receiving nerve. And this signal goes down the narrow part of the nerve called the axon and it reaches the nerve ending. And these little things in there those little circles with the real little red dots, those are called uh, vesicles. And they carry these little chemicals in them, right? They carry these things, these neurotransmitters. And depending on the signal and depending on the circumstance, it is going to release, kind of secrete itself from the end of that nerve, right? And cross what's called the synaptic cleft. Why is that important? because nerves don't touch each other unless in, in specific cir circumstances. They don't touch each other. So they have to go to this cleft. And by doing so, we have these wonderful mechanisms that you guys are gonna learn about. Because they go through this process, we can actually control how much of the message is sent, when the message is sent, when it's like terminated, we can, we can kind of add drugs and chemicals to that area to increase the message or decrease the message. All of that happens in that cleft. So then the potential goes down the axon, hits the, tells the, the nerve endings, secrete, release the hounds. They cross the cleft and then they attach to these things on the receiving nerves and these are called receptors. These are real important because the receptors, nothing is going to enter in here unless the receptor says it's kind of like the bouncer at the door. And these guys show up and like, I'm on the list. And the receptor looks at the list and is like, now nah, you're not on the list. <laughs> you're going to have to stand outside. And so if you're outside the club long enough, eventually what's going to happen? You never got in, what happens? No. You go away, right? So you actually wind up getting degraded <laughs> and you get reabsorbed and you go back home to where you came from. You didn't get into the club that day, right? You didn't know the right person. If you do know the right person, right? And you hit the receptor and then you're like, hey, you know, I know DJ. We went to middle school together. Like, oh, let me see if you're on the list. They let you in. And if you're the right kind of, depending on the type of vesicle you are, the kind of neurotransmitter you are, once you get in the club, you might turn it up, right? Seriously, so like, oh my God, they should have never let her in, right? So once this person gets in, it's on, could have been one of those, or you could be the pipe person that once they let you in the club, everybody's like, who let this mofo in? This is the horse killing my vibe here. So it all depends. Eventually, what you'll do when you're in there is if you turn it up, the entire club gets turned up, right? So that signal goes through everyone and everyone gets excited. Or you go in there and you turn it down and you're a real buzzkill and everyone's like, man, listen, if you see this person outside again, right? Let me know so I can leave because I don't want to be a part of this party if they're going to be involved in there. So this is basically how it works. And we have any questions on that whatsoever? And so all of this, if you see this, this is calcium, right? So all of this happens through sodium, calcium, like I said, through these ionic exchanges. And because of the amount of ions that are allowed to get in and out, you will change whether or not the increased action potential occurs. Make sense thus far? The release of the neurotransmitters causes a change in the amount of ions to flow across the membrane, whether it's calcium or sodium, right? The receptor lets it in, you get excited, increase ion flow and action potential or inhibition, decrease ion flow and action potential. Your nerves will either carry the signal to the next nerve and carry it on and carry it on and carry it on and carry it on and something will happen to you or your nerves will say, nah, this is cool, we're good right here and something else will happen to you. One of the two things will. And one other thing, depending on the amount, you can have one action in the beginning and then as you increase as you let more people in right so when the club was kind of like ah 
you know, partly full. It was really fun in there. Then when it got overcrowded, we let all these people in. It's not fun anymore, and it's time to get out of here. We just squash the fun, right? So depending on the amount, you can get a different reaction from the same neurotransmitter based upon the time. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. So let's talk about examples. Has anyone ever heard of glutamate, a glutamic acid? You have. Where have you heard of it? MSG. MSG. Tell us about MSG, not where the Knicks play. Madison, <laughs> Madison Square Garden. All right, go, tell us about it. Uh, it is a stimulatory make your nerves fire. Yeah, MSG is monosodium glutamate, right? Where else do you guys find MSG? Chinese food. Chinese food. What's up, man? Why you gotta blow up the Chinese people like that? <laughs> right? So it's a it's a food food flavoring, and what's in it that is bad for us? MSG, monosodium glutamate. Which part of that is bad for us? S starts with a. S See, hey, there you go. Hey, you guys are smart. Now you picked that up. I didn't even have to give you a hint. <laughs> right? So, all right. So, motosodium uh, glutamate, you find that it's a flavoring. It increases, it, it increases uh, salt content in your body, which causes hypertension. Right? We don't want that. All right. So, it's excitatory. It's the most abundant neurotransmitter. It's a precursor to another neurotransmitter. That means this allows its friend to come in, right? So it's like, hey, I'm on the list. Yeah, let me see. All right, you're in. She's with me, <laughs> right? Now you get to bring your friend in, which is GABA, which is another neurotransmitter. So glutamate has a twofold, a multifold purpose, right? It's an excitatory neurotransmitter and it's responsible for the production of GABA, which has its own purposes, right? It's predominantly responsible for learning and memory. It's implicated in Alzheimer's disease, autism, epilepsy, ADHD, and many more. Many, 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 many more, right? So now we're getting into the meat of some of the things that we wanna really investigate when we're talking about cannabinoids, right? Cannabis science. How is this stuff gonna affect us? Oh man, I heard this stuff is good for ADHD. Somebody said it's good for my kids with aut autism. Man, I've got, I've got epilepsy, right? I heard cannabis is good for epilepsy. How does that work, right? Do you just rub it on my forehead and it takes away my seizures or like, you know, so this is how it works. It's the chemical reactions within the, within the neurons that are changing the act of action potential that either decrease or increase that. All right, so that means, what do you think if we think about epilepsy, right? Do you think, you have an overabundance of glutamic acid activity in epileptic con conditions, or do you think we have a insufficient amount of glutamic acid activity in epileptic condition? And who says insufficient? If you're gonna say you gotta own it, no, no, you gotta take, you gotta, ah, insufficient. If you're gonna stand on the eye, you might as well. You might be right. You might be right, rabbit. You might. Or you could be wrong and then. And that would be okay too. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna go out, go out all the way, right? Who says it's because of overabundance? And how about the cool crew in the back row? You guys are still like, now nah, we're too cool to participate. We're just here for attendance. <laughs> All right, so it's excitatory, right? So seizure activity is an overstimulation, right? Too much electrical activity in it, so it's excitatory. We're gonna learn how cannabis actually uh, affects that. GABA is, is the counterbalance to that. It's responsible for reducing anxiety. High levels of GABA can cause sedation, 
right? It's also found in immune cells, right? As an anti-inflammatory, it modulates the immune response, right? And it's suspected to contribute to pain modulation in certain conditions and hyperalgesia, which means increased pain. Anyone know any drugs that work on the GABA receptors? Okay. Hmm? Benzos. Yeah, benzos. Good. So alcohol. alcohol, very good. So those, if you think about what benzos and alcohol do to you, right? They do what? They sedate you, right? They chill you out. Alcohol has a biphasic action though, right? Because what does a little bit of alcohol do to you? Gets you lit, right? So if you ever watch drunk college kids, when they first start partying, they're ready to fight. The end of the night, you gotta drag them out of there, right? So you don't wanna show up early. That's why they give you like the early bird drinking specials. You don't wanna be part of that crew, right? That's when the fights break out. You gotta wait till like later on when they're all completely sedated, right? And they're like drooling upon themselves. So high levels of this stuff, high levels of, of GABA, gamma, amino butyric acid can cause sedation. And it's an analgesic, right? It'll help you with some of your pain. So we're starting to see how these neurotransmitters can contribute to a bunch of diseases. Dopamine, who's heard of this? I like it. Dopamine, tell me, where have you heard about it? Besides what I already have on there, smarty pants. Huh? You produce it, all right? You do. Where do you produce it? The brain. Ah, nice. I like somebody's been listening. Somebody's been listening, right? It's a neurotransmitter and it's a hormone, right? It works on the reward and decision-making pathway. As a hormone, it works in the anterior pituitary and it anterior pituitary, and it does what? It controls prolactin production. You guys don't need to worry about that, right? Uh, it works on reward and decision-making pathway. What does that mean to you? What does that sound to you? Sound like to you? Thanksgiving is coming up in a couple of weeks. There's gonna be some decisions you're gonna have to make, right? Name a decision you'll have to make at Thanksgiving. Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? Sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie, right? <laughs> right? And what would make you lean towards sweet potato or what would make you lean towards pumpkin? Whipped cream. Reward. Decision-making pathway. What am I going to go with? Sweet potato or pumpkin pie? He throws a little whipped cream on top. I'm going with the whipped cream. It's going to make me feel good. I get that. I'm going to get a lot of dopamine. I want more whipped cream. Every day I want whipped cream. When I wake up in the morning, I want whipped cream. <laughs> what am I now? Addicted. I'm addicted, <laughs> right? So it's not only just the reward, it's the decision-making pa pa pathway. That means I'm consciously saying, because of this thing, I want to do this again, right? Because of what happened, because of what this provides to me and the secretion of dopamine, I want to do this stuff again. This stuff is awesome. I do this all day long. As a matter of fact, I'll stop doing other stuff just so I can do this stuff, right? That's extreme addiction. All right. Works on the reward, and your reward is that you get this wonderful blast of sugar, it tastes good, you get the endorphins from there, you're like, yeah, man, I like that feeling. It's also involved in motor control, learning, attention, memorization, important in development, important in degenerative diseases like Parkinson's, right? So Parkinson's is treated with dopamine, artificial dopamine, L-Dopa and Carvidopa, right? ADHD, schizophrenia, bipolar, hypertension, because it works as a hormone in the kidneys, and many, many more. Last one because there's over 60 neurotransmitters, but we're gonna stick to four big ones for what we want, right? Serotonin, who's heard of that? Uh, everybody, everybody's like, yeah, 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 because that's an easy one, right? That's a commonly, commonly, commonly dealt with one for what condition? Depression. Depression. Depression is the predominant, uh, the, the, the predominant reason it's dealt with, and then secondary is anxiety, right? So it's also responsible for sleep-wake cy cycle, mood, 
appetite, temperature, decreased appetite, anti-emesis. What's emesis? Who knows what that is? Vomiting, right? It's implicated in depression, suicide, impulsive behavior, and aggressiveness. All right, what do you think? Too much serotonin or too little serotonin? If I'm walking through with my chest out, like, yeah, the man, too much, right? So if I come through to a cannabis lecture and I sit in the back row and I'm like, yeah, I know all about this weed stuff. Who's this guy, right? Too much or too little serotonin? Too much, right? So there's actually a study where they, uh, they actually uh, examined some uh, monkeys. You know how uh, these, these primates have this kind of hierarchy power, a hierarchical power structure where you have this alpha male and then you have all everyone kind of like following around, you know, and then every once in a while somebody comes through and is like, hey, listen, I want to be the boss. Then they have like a fight. Somebody's butt turns real red or something like that, right? And then like, he gets all the girls because he's got a bright hair, something like that. Somebody's butt is red in the monkey thing. But what they found was the alpha male had higher levels of way higher levels of serotonin than all the other males as well as the females including the alpha female and then when they removed the alpha male from that group someone took his place right and that dude all of a sudden got these really high levels of serotonin and then why did this dude all, all of a sudden get these real high levels of serotonin? Because he's the king now, right? He's, got, he's, the, he's the king, right? So his body is producing this stuff to give him the ability to fulfill his role. Dude, there's going to be guys chasing your women all the time, trying to get your food. You got to like walk around with your chest out and your red butt all the time or else it's over for you. All right. So so we've got these good examples of neurotransmitters. Let's go over them real quick. Right. We'll go. You guys want to go from the beginning backwards or from back forward? Start with start from from the beginning. All right. What was the first one we spoke about? Glutamine. glutamine, glutamic acid, right? What is it? Does it excite you or chill you out? Excite, excite you. All right. What does it make? GABA. GABA. What does GABA do? It chills you out. All right. After that, what do we have? Dope. Who? You don't call me a dope. You're dopes. No. All right. Dopamine. What does dopamine do? What's it responsible for? reward and decision making, learning, motor function, right? And then we have serotonin, right? Appetite, mood, aggression, depression, all this stuff. Now that we have a basis of these neurotransmitters we're talking about, let's talk about the dude that we're here to talk about, our, our homeboy CBD. I grew up in Brooklyn, so I still use like, you know, it just comes out of me, homeboy. and. So cannabidiol, CBD, is one of many phytocannabinoids, you guys. I didn't, I'm not gonna go like all into the history of all that stuff, because you've been here all weekend. You've had enough of that stuff, right? So the reason that we are gonna mention some of these things is because of its connection to what we just spoke about with what the neurotransmitters do, right? So claims to fame, why is this important? Why are we tying this together, right? Well, someone once said that CBD is an anti-epileptic. Right? We spoke about a neurotransmitter that could have anti-epileptic properties, right? Which one was that? Ooh, come on. Come on, say it with me. Dopamine. Dopamine. It's non-psychoactive, right? It doesn't get you all charged up and high, right? It's anxiolytic. That's the term you'll hear. Anytime you hear the term, the medical term, and it, a medical term that ends in lytic, L-Y-T-I-C, that means it gets rid of something. It's anxiolytic. So it gets rid of anxiety. Someone said CBD does that as well, right? You've heard that. Have you not? Yeah, right, good, right? All right. Question. Answers. Do you mean anxiolytic and non-psychoactive? Don't we need 
non-euphorogenic? No, it's non-psychoactive, meaning cognition altering, right? It changes your ability to perceive your environment, to interact with your environment, right? So when we talk about, when they use the term psychoactive, they're talking about your ability to perceive and interact with your environment at a baseline level. So something takes you away from that, it's psychoactive, right? So you're, you're, you're misperceiving things. Things are either augmented or depressed, slowed down. All right, it's a pain reliever. The word that you hear for that is analgesic, right? Have you guys heard that? CBD is a pain, right? All right, it's an anti-inflammatory. You guys heard that, all right? It's a sleep aid. You guys heard that? This stuff does a lot of stuff, right? Right? How the hell is it doing always? It's like snake oil, right? So it supposedly does all this stuff. And then we just went through four neurotransmitters that do all this stuff as well, right? So how do those two, how does that jive? Because we know in traditional medicine, for example, we spoke about serotonin, right? If I was depressed, I would get prescribed an, an, an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, right? What would that do? That would stop the serotonin that was in that synaptic cleft. Remember I said you get that released and it would stop your nerve from reuptaking the serotonin. It hangs out in the synapse more and keeps pestering the bouncer to let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in, right? Because there's something that tells you, hey, listen, if you're not on the list and you're standing outside the club, you got to beat it. <laughs> like, you can't, we can't have you guys just hanging out in front of the door here. You got to go home, right? So if I was depressed, I'd get an SSR, SS, SSRI, right? If I had anxiety, what would I give you? A benzodiazepine, right? So we're looking at different, if I had Parkinson's, right, I'd get dopamine, right? So I'm getting all these different drugs to treat these things. And here we are, all of us cannabis enthusiasts and CBD enthusiasts saying, you don't need to do all that. We got this one little thing, this one little molecule from this plant that'll do all that stuff. You guys don't worry, don't worry about it. This, you know, just put some oil under your tongue, you're fine, right? Or rub some of this on your knee, they'll take it all away. Obviously, it doesn't sound right. Right? So if I was someone who didn't understand the science, right, I would be skeptical. Why would I believe you? You're telling me that this thing could do the job of all these other things where all this money and research and development and we know it's proven. How the hell does this all work? Well, let's do this. So first, you guys know about the cannabinoid receptors, CB1 and CB2, they're all over the body. There's a third cannabinoid, there's cannabinoid-like receptors. There's another one in the brain that they're like, oh, I think this is going to be a third one. And they're kind of like on the fence about it, right? Now, these receptors are important because they cause, especially CB1 receptor, right? And where's that CB1 receptor found? In the brain, predominantly in the brain, right? Brain and central nervous system can cause inhibition of glutamatergic, GABAergic, glycinergic, cholinergic, noradrenergic, all the ergics, right? Serotonergic, neurotransmission in many regions of the central nervous system. What does that mean? So that means, that means if I have these cannabinoid one receptors and they're activated, right? I can decrease the amount of this stuff being produced. Why is that important? Because I didn't tell you guys in the beginning, the natural state for your body is to be producing this stuff, right? So you're not hanging out here and your body's like, nah, we're not producing any dopamine right now. Yeah. You don't need it, it's cool. You're constantly producing it, right? It's the inhibition of this stuff that allows certain levels of it to actually have the effect, right? So we inhibit the disinhibition and boom, we get this effect. Oh, now I'm high, right? Now I'm feeling all wonderful. Now I'm feeling all great. 
So why is that important? A, because when we look at CBD, one of the things that CBD does, and we'll, we'll get to this, right, is that CBD has an interaction with not only cannabinoid receptors, but with receptors for these neurotransmitters, right? Remember the bouncer at the door that's letting you in, right? So for each club, there's a bouncer that you have to be on the list for. And if you're not on the list, you're not getting in, right? So CBD, somehow or another, is cool enough to know some of these bouncers, to just know the DJ at a lot of these places. It shows up and it's like, hey, I'm on the list. And the guy's like, oh, CBD. Who do you know again? It's like, I know THC. Oh, <laughs> that's our boy. You can come in. Sometimes CBD can't get in all the way, but it allows a friend to get in, right? So in the reward circuit, this is important, right? And this is, this is why people, there's things like uh, cannabis uh, use disorder, right? In the, reward circuit, in the reward circuit, when he's eating his whipped cream, right? Lots of dopamine is being released. Tons of this stuff is like, hey, take this, take this, take this. And he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So the next time he's got to make a decision, What's he gonna go with? He already told us, right? That answer is from experience, right? That answer is not like a, I've heard about this whipped cream stuff, looks pretty good on television, right? That answer was like a whipped cream. <laughs> whipped cream, I'm already thinking about it. Two weeks from now, I already know what I'm going for. And that's because that's the reward in there, right? So that high levels of dopamine stimulate that reward. The decrease in GABA, and what does GABA do? Well, so let's go over there, right? There's one that stimulates you, right? Tells you to do this, and there's the other one that's like, no, don't do it, 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 right? What if you got rid of the friend that's there saying don't do it all the time? You're left alone with the crazy friend that wants to turn up and party all night long, right? You're left alone with that person because the other one, the GABA, is decreased, gone, left, left the situation. The, the, the little angel on the shoulder that's like, I don't think this is a good idea. We really have work tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. We have all this stuff, it's gone. You're on your own with the crazy one. You're off, you're off and running. All right, Dopam dopamine neurons in the circuit don't have CB1 receptors, but are normally inhibited by GABA that, that do have them. Cannabis removes this inhibition by the GABA neurons and hence activates the dopamine neurons. I'm gonna get a reward, right? So if I consume THC, I get this great, wonderful reward. This is awesome, right? We still haven't gotten the CBD, right? CBD inhibits the activity of FAAH. FAAH is fatty acid amide hydroxylate. It's an old friend of mine. No, FAAH is another one of those enzymes that clears things out of the synapse. Right? It's another person that's outside the door of the club telling people, you can't hang out out here. You gotta go, go, go. So whenever there's, there's cannabinoids, you're endogenous cannabinoids hanging outside, trying to get in, right? There's something that clears them out. It's like, listen, that's enough. You guys gotta go. You're crowding the front. We have other, we have paying customers trying to get in. You guys gotta go, right? FAAH is that chemical that clears those guys out and then they go home. And then tomorrow they try to get back into the club, right? CBD tells FAAH, hey, listen, man, let me talk to you. And while it's talking to FAAH, it's like, go, 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 go in, right? All its friends sneak in. That's basically what happens. So one of the first effects that you get from using 
CBD is that it increases the activity of your endogenous cannabinoids and their ability to do their work on cannabinoid receptors causing this reward system to go into place. Make sense? No, doesn't make sense. Let's try it again, all right? There's no, no worries, right? So your, body's, your body produces cannabinoids. You guys know that. Who doesn't know that from this weekend? All right, so let's go back. So you have something called endocannabinoid system. Who's heard of that? All right, all right. So you've heard of the endocannabinoid system. You produce this stuff that's all over the place, right? You have, you have a bunch of endocannabinoids. You have about five of them, but we, we usually deal and speak about two, right? Anandamide, you guys heard of that? No. All right, anandamide is the bliss molecule, makes you feel happy. And you guys heard of 2AE? 2AG, excuse me. Anandamide is AE, AEA, 2AG, 2-arachidonoglyceryl acid, right? It's another endogenous cannabinoid, right? So anandamide predominantly impacts your CB1 receptors. Anandamide is the bliss molecule. It makes you feel happy and it hits all these receptors and you're like, yeah, because it hits those receptors that allows this pleasure and reward system to take over, right? Right, which is, it's right on there, was it on? Yeah, it's right on there, right? Then you have another endogenous cannabinoid called 2-AG, works on your CB2 receptors. Your body produces those, and they go through the nerve terminals, just like the other neurotransmitters, and there's a chemical there that cleans them out, right? So if we go to that, that first slide, I wanna make sure that everybody understands. So if we go to that first slide of the nerve terminal there, right? So as I was saying to you guys, your body produces these neurotransmitters, they're in vesicles, they get secreted. They hit the bouncer at the door, he says you can come in, stuff happens. Stuff, these guys that don't get in, they get degraded, recirculated, go home, beat it, right? Right, and remember, your natural cannabinoids are responsible for causing signaling of these other neurotransmitters. Besides doing that directly, CBD is like, hey, 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 I can do some stuff myself too here, right? You know, like it's not all about THC. Like I got friends too, and I'm able to get us in the club as well. So CBD will go to your serotonin receptors who are on the side door and say, listen, man, I got a couple of buddies with me. You know we're not gonna turn turn it up and go crazy like the other ones. We're just gonna keep it a little mellow in here, right? You mind if you let us in? Serotonin receptors say, eh, you guys look harmless enough. Come on in. What does serotonin do? You guys remember? It does? What? Go ahead. It, it, yep, yeah, makes you feel happy. Go ahead, feel free. Listen, if you get something wrong, or if you don't know the answer, Next time I'll be like, ah, 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 ah. I'll be posting it on Twitter. Let me tell you what just happened in this lecture. Somebody just gave me a wrong answer. No, right? So feel free to speak. Um, and the, you're supposed to be learning here. So if you if you don't know something, the best way to learn sometimes is to get it wrong. Then it'll stay in your brain, right? So it's a direct agonist. An agonist is like a you guys know like a, a hero. Right? Right? It's the agonist. It's the hero. It's the hero at serotonin re receptors. It is a direct agonist at serotonin receptors. You take CBD and without doing anything else, without helping your other cannabinoids or anything, CBD itself will cause a little bit of happiness. Sound good to you? Right? So this is why we have this biphasic response, CBD, right? Because if we take small amounts. You ever hear people say, sometimes when I take CBD, I feel a little excited, right? Ever heard that, anybody? No, Bueller? All right, so if you do hear that, you could be like, well, yeah, that's obviously because of the CBD's activity in the serotonin receptors. It's an agonist. Did you know that? Right? You can sound like a big brain. 
Yeah. Right? So it makes you feel happy. What did we say CBD was good for? Depression, right? So this is not hocus pocus anymore. Right? So we, we're drawing the connection. We know what the neurotransmitter does. We know how it does it, right? And now we know that CBD itself has activity on this neurotransmitter. Boom. So you get direct activity there. Two, it's a mild agonist at dopamine receptors. What does dopamine do for you? Reward, decision making, right? It's also, it's my, it's also motor function, learning. So people who have neurodegenerative diseases, traumatic brain injury, Parkinsonism, epilepsy, it's just saying, hey man, I don't know, when I take the CBD stuff, I can kind of think a little clearer. Things are not as foggy anymore. Kind of like all the noise goes away. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Have you ever had that experience, right? Like, I can't explain it, but I just feel like things are a little easier for me to comprehend. It's a mild agonist at those receptors. So boom, you take some CBD, it's gonna give you a little bit of clarity. Hey, I feel like I just took something <laughs> that makes me feel better. Yeah, it does, because of what it does. It's a mild partial agonist at cannabinoid receptors, the CB1 receptors specifically, right? So it's not going to hit those cannabinoid 1 receptors. What happens if you have a lot of activity at your CB1 receptors? What does it do to you? Is it, right? And then what feeling do you get? Are you high or are you sober? High. THC hits those receptors hard. That's why you get high, because THC hits those cannabinoid 1 receptors. So CBD is a mild agonist at those. Not enough to make you high. Nowhere near enough to make you high. Just enough for you to be like, huh? Today was a rough day. Whatever. Right? This, is, this guy's busting my chops over here. I could care less. The kids are crying. They're going bananas. Doesn't bother me. Flight is delayed. Four times, I remember one experience I had in the airport one day, I swear to God, my flight was delayed three times. And I remember um, that day just being like, I care less. And I was looking at everyone else who was just like, ah, I can't believe, and they were cursing out the, the, the people at the, you know, the, the attendants at the gate and giving them the business like they could do. I was like, those people don't have anything to do with this. Like they're not in charge of this. They're just giving you the information. And as people like walk away from the gate, like go like, you know, and then come back and like give them the business some more. And I'm like, damn, that would have been me if I didn't have these wonderful cannabinoids in my body. Because right now I'm just like, okay, whatever. We'll get there when we get there, right? So it's a mild agonist. Again, not enough to make you high, but it's enough to alter your mood, just enough for you to notice a difference in behavior, right? It's a mild allosteric modulator at GABA A receptors. What does that mean? Mm. All right, so let's talk about these words. Allosteric, meaning on the same side, because these molecules are like three-dimensional and they have all these things going on, right? And they're different types of receptors. It will attach itself to the receptor, right? But it's not gonna go in. What it does is, it holds the door, it's at the club and it's talking to the bouncer again. It's like, hey, listen, let me tell you something. Did you watch the game last night? Right, that was a good game, right? Softens the bouncer up. And then somebody else comes in and says, hey, can I come in with my friend? Bouncer, having had such a wonderful conversation with CBD is like, you know what? You're not on the list, but I'm in such a good mood after talking to this guy, ah, whatever, right? Makes it easier for the GABA molecules to attach themselves to the GABA receptors. Changes the shape of the receptor so that the GABA molecules that you already have there can attack, attach themselves. Now, what does GABA do? 
inhibits you, chills you out, right? So that means what your body is already producing gets an opportunity to do its work a little bit more. So this is the wonderful thing about this molecule and about these plants is that instead of introducing something to your body that's operating on its own pathway, right? Independently of everything else, you know, like as I would with, for example, working on a GABA like I would with a benzodiazepine, right? Which is working like, so like I'm just doing this and I'm not keeping everything else in balance, right? So now I'm just gonna bring a whole bunch of these Debbie Downers in with me, right? Ruin your day. And sometimes some people will complain. What are the complaints that people have about taking benzodiazepines, right? I'm sluggish all day long. I'm kind of zonked out. I don't like the way I feel, right? Well, now you can get this, this feeling that you're looking for without having those side effects because it's not introducing something foreign to you. It's a allowing what your body already has going on to do its own work and to do it at a better level, to do it more effectively. And there, that way, your own body is healing itself, right? And that's why this is such a wonderful thing because the side effect profile is what? What's the major side effect of CBD? You guys know? Oh, tired. Tired, sleepy. It's called somnolence. Right? So remember we said that on that list of things that it does, like yeah, it's anti-inflammatory, this, this and that, causes somnolence. That's a side effect of that. How does it cause somnolence? Which is the inhibitory thing? Yeah. GABA. You get lots of activity at your GABA receptors. You drink lots of beer. What happens to you? You get tired, you get sleepy. I take lots of CBD, lots of CBD. It's modulating that receptor. It's increasing the amount of the GABA activity that's available. My body's just like, hey man, I think we're gonna call it a night. <laughs> like, it's over for us, we're done. Boom, boom, boom. Your body naturally puts itself to sleep. <gasps> you wake up in the morning and you're not drowsy. Why aren't you drowsy? Because this thing didn't attach itself to the receptor and cause something else to come in. It's not a lot of it floating around like the benzodiazepines, right? It allowed what your body made to do that and your body self-regulates because eventually your body has a system that's gonna clear that stuff back out, recirculate it. Question, glutamate is there making GABA all the time, all the time to keep you balanced. So when you hear this term homeostasis, all the time, right? This is what we're talking about. So that term is generically used, like, oh, you know, homeostasis, and a lot of people say that, where well, you guys don't know what they're really talking about, right? So we're talking about the ability of your body to auto-regulate, self-regulate, get these things in, a balance, in the proportion that they're supposed to be, right? Because they're supposed to like, hey, a little bit of this, a lot of this. And at some point, you know, at night, maybe less of this and more of this. Right? If the fire alarm went off right now, would you guys be calm or would you be excited? Excited, it's natural. You're supposed to feel that way, right? That's a natural thing. Anxiety is good for you. It protects you. Fear is good for you. It lets you know there's danger around you, right? You heard a loud sound, whoa, what the hell is that? That's good for you. So the absence of that, is not a good thing, right? It's just when that's out of proportion to the level that it's supposed to be, right? So I start giving you pills to take away your anxiety, and now I dumbed you down, I dulled you down. If a wild dog came in here, you're all doped up on Valium, you're like, oh man, I don't know, I don't know what to do. That dog looks vicious, right? But if you're on CBD, your body's mechanisms can, because this is happening from your body's own production, it will just overwhelm what's going on. And then that excitability, that glutamate will kick in and you're out of here. I don't know about the rest of those people, <laughs> but I'm out of here. So this is, the, this is the wonderful thing about the plant because it regulates. So let's talk about a few other things that we didn't speak about, right? So we're talking about the sleep here. We spoke about the sleep, right? So that's a side effect, 
somnolence is a side effect. That's a primary side effect. And and in, in medicine, you would call that off-label use if this was a, a drug. So let's say Epidiolex, the, the uh, seizure medication, right, that CBD is used for. If I was to give someone large amounts of Epidiolex, it'll put them to sleep, right? That would be an off-label use of that. It's meant for epilepsy, but I know that the side effect is sleepiness. You told me that you can't go to sleep. Take a bunch of this stuff, it'll put you to sleep, all right? Without killing you. It'll put you to sleep without killing you, right? Or depressing your central nervous system like some of these other things do. All right, it's also a sleep aid because it affects serotonin and serotonin is responsible for your circadian rhythm and sleep wake cycle, right? Anti-inflammatory, right? So we said that we have these cannabinoid receptors all throughout the body. We said that? Yep. All right, cool, just checking, right? Which ones, cannabinoid one or cannabinoid two? Two, right? So they're all, the, and they're also expressing your immune cells. Again, CBD allows a persistence of your cannabinoids, your, your body's production of cannabinoids to stay in the areas that they're supposed to be a little bit longer. So instead of having an overactive and an over, overabundant response, it can have a well-modulated response, right? So it's not an immunosuppressant in, in, in the traditional terms. So when we talk about using CBD as an anti-inflammatory or an immune system modulator, or sometimes talk about using it for autoimmune diseases like lupus or Crohn's disease or things like that, it doesn't make you susceptible to illnesses or things like that, right? It modulates the activity, right? And it also, because these things, because these CB2 receptors are throughout the body, right? And it's working there, it also helps with vasodilation, circulation, and all these other things because of other um, um, neurotransmitters that are, that are involved. Cool? So let's wrap this up. You guys can ask questions. All right, so it's a direct action. So here we go. Let's go back to the beginning here, right? Anti epileptic. Can we say that CBD does have some anti seizure properties, right? Yes or no? You guys believe me? You take my word for this stuff? No, it, it. All right, that's right. Cool. Don't let the both, I like that, right? All right, so. Um, and how does that work? Through what? Nortrin, dopamine, right? And what does CBD do at the dopamine receptor? It's a, right? It's a modulator, right? It's an allostatic amount. It makes the dopamine receptor more susceptible to letting dopamine in. All right, you guys are all right. CBD said you guys are cool. You guys come in, right? So we said that, right? It's non-psychoactive. Why is it non-psychoactive? Because the psychoactive stuff happens because of activity at the CB1 receptor. And at the CB1 receptor, is CBD a strong activator there? No, it's a very mild activator. Some people will say it's actually just a antagonist, right? We know the agonist is the hero, the antagonist is the villain, right? It's the anti-hero. When CBD attaches itself to a CB1 receptor, guess who can't attach itself to that receptor? THC, right? CBD's on that receptor, taking the bouncer's attention and THC's in the background like, but I'm supposed to be in and like, oh, don't listen to that guy. Listen, let's talk about it, right? So anti, and so is it non-psychoactive? Yes. yes. Does it attach itself to the CB1 receptor? Yes. Yes, good. Anxiety relief, does it relieve your anxiety? Yes. Yes, through what neurotransmitter? GABA. GABA, oh dang, you guys are smart. All right. What else will it do? Our friend GABA here. Hmm? At the bottom. 
number right before it says suspect. Analgesic, yeah. Pain relief and anti-inflammatory. All right, so we got that. We know, and that's through GABA. And the last one, sleep aid. Serotonin. Serotonin and who else? And GABA, right? Any any questions? Question. You know that CD comes in two program products, CD and full spectrum. So mm. from the full spectrum isolate products, are they targeting specific receptors between CD one and CD? Good question, right? So the full spectrum products have that 0.3 THC, percent THC in it. So what that does is allow those THC molecules, those THC uh, molecules to attach themselves to those CB1 and CB2 receptors and then create a little bit stronger um, interaction there. Still not enough to get you high, right? But enough to start a signaling cascade that will cause an increase in release of other neurotransmitters. And that's basically why you hear about this entourage effect, right? It's not only because of the THC's effect on these neurotransmitters, but also because of the effect of the terpenes in there, right? And that's another lecture. But that's basically, you know, why this entourage thing works, because you do have this little bit of THC that's hitting those cannabinoid receptors that's going to give you that little, you know, that little ah, that you're looking for. All right, next question. Any answers? Any smart remarks? She's like, she's, she's like, I think I got a smart remark. All right, now, nah, yeah. All right, well, you guys have been absolutely wonderful, right? I hope you had a wonderful weekend at the, um, at the, at the expo. It's a great time to be part of the space. And, you know, if you ever need anything, you can find me. Uh, I'll get this out to you guys so you can download it and have it for your reference. You can find me on social media. Um, hit me up if you ever need anything. I'm always, I'll, I answer as many questions that I, as I can. And I love to help. So that's my thing. Yeah.